Kyle and I are at it again. <laughs> and what we have to say is probably gonna cause us to lose 5,000 subscribers today, but we don't care. This has to be said, and the weight loss and fitness industry isn't gonna tell you this because the whole industry would go down. So, we'll tell you. <sighs> Hit it, Sass. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> All right, first thing, me and Nicole have lost 130 pounds each, kept it off for over eight years. Yes. Now, what the, one of the biggest lessons we learned that if it's popular, especially in fitness, exercise, weight loss, do the opposite. Yes. So for instance, we always heard about jogging when we first started losing weight. Every time I tried to run or jog, hurt my knees, hurt my back, couldn't sustain it long enough to burn calories. So I could jog for five feet. Next day I'm sore, I never want to do it again, so I don't continue. Go back to eating and doing nothing, sitting on the couch. Jogging, hit okay. high intensity and interval training. 98% yep. of people watching this video and watching every other video on YouTube are not fit enough to do hit training. Hit training, real high intensity interval training applies to like Olympic athletes. Yes. Where they can get their heart rate up um, for, you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds at a time in five minutes on and off enough to burn calories or to get whatever activity they're trying to do done. I can't do real hit. And Me neither. I... I am fairly fit. I do an hour of cardio every single day. Nicole does too. And we're not fit enough to do HIIT training. So if somebody's very popular, which most of the popular fitness influencers are on social media, they're telling you to do high intensity training. 90 to 95, 98% of their audience can't do it. Yeah. Or they're telling you to do exercise that's really hard and saying that that's good for you. Well, like, like Kyle was saying, when we were trying to jog, physically, um, we were morbidly obese. Our body couldn't physically do that kind of exercise without getting injured. And obviously, then we would either be so exhausted because we didn't have enough energy to do that and we weren't physically fit enough, or we would get injured and we would never want to do it again. Especially for calorie burning and weight hard. loss. If your goal is weight loss, and you're morbidly obese, you won't be able to sustain jogging or HIIT training for long enough to burn off any calories at all. And people think that jogging does burn calories if you can sustain it for an hour, yeah. half an hour. Well, who can do that? Most Not many people that are morbidly obese can do that. All they do is end up hurting themselves. It looks great on paper. Or when a, you know somebody fit that you're watching on social media says it, it sounds good. But in the real world, if you're not fit enough, like most people aren't, like I'm not, it's not going to work. So why popular people on social media push these types of things it be is because it speaks to the ego. Yes. So my ego, why we know about all these things is because we fell for them. Yes. My ego, when I was younger, you know, in my 20s, was huge. So when someone told me you can do anything, go for a jog, bench, don't warm up and go in the gym and bench press, you know, three, 400 pounds. Well, all I did was hurt my shoulders. Yep. All I did was hurt my knees and I didn't lose any weight, which was my real goal was trying to lose weight. But when they speak to your ego, you get the likes, you get the comments, you get the support of everybody because most people are stuck and asleep in their ego. So they Popular people tell you what you want to hear. Me and Nicole tell you the opposite. Yeah. What you don't want to hear. That's why our fault. People say you guys should have a bigger <laughs> following. I can't believe you don't have more uh, subscribers. Well, we know why we don't. Because we're honest. We're honest. Like <laughs> common sense will never be trending. No, and that's okay with us because we had to save our lives by losing weight in a way that we could sustain. Jogging, hit, ab stuff. Any of the crap that's promoted in the fitness and weight loss industry did not work for us. Oh yeah, we'll talk about abs. Yes. So ab training is another thing promoted by a lot of people that are popular. That if you do ab training... Gets and, you abs. Yeah, like that you'll sit get... sit-ups, crunches, get you abs. It's not how it works. Having yeah. a low body fat eating and a calorie deficit is what gets you abs. But... Yes. Again, the ego does not want to eat less. It would rather do five crunches and go, where are my abs? And I only know because I did it for years. 
I tried, oh God, I did countless crunches and, and ab exercises and I never lost weight and I never got abs and I never got a flat stomach. To lose the weight, Kyle and I have both, like we said, lost 130 pounds. To do that, we didn't do ab exercises the entire time. We still don't. Still don't do it. We ate in a calorie deficit. It's diet that gets you a flat stomach and there's no spot training though. You have to lose the weight all over. And then, you know, for us, we hold fat in our stomach more. So that was the last thing to get flat. And for me, it's still not 100% flat. Trust me, I'm very lazy. If I could spot train, I would only do abs. And I, if I could lose <laughs> body fat and have six pack by doing abs, I'd be doing them right now. I wouldn't even be making this video. Yes, same. It's, um, they want, for some reason, the push is to work hard, do so much to lose weight, do all this high intensity training and all these hard exercises. We learned like because both of us are lazy, we want to do the least amount of work and get the most amount of results. We learned if you pull back and do things slowly and be lazy, to, to it your, actually works. Yeah, do it to your fitness level. Yes. And that takes a lot. Of, you have to look in the mirror and be acknowledge where you're at and stop trying to do jumping jacks and skip rope and jogging if you can't do that. And we couldn't. And if, believe me, we tried. If you're low enough body fat, that you know you're an you're going on stage bodybuilder you wouldn't be watching this channel probably but no. then you can do some abs to kind of show your abs better but yes. also ab training when you train a muscle it makes the muscle bigger yes. so when you're training when you have lots of body fat and you're training abs it makes your midsection bigger yeah, if you actually want to shrink your stomach you would do vacuums and eat in a calorie deficit yeah, it's crazy. Like, I didn't know that either. All the times I did abs, but I was making my stomach wider. And so, you know, for us, what we realized, we needed to eat less. Even though that was really hard and we avoided that for years, we had to get in a calorie deficit and we used portion control to do that. So number um, one, why probably people won't like this video, number one point that we learned that works in the real world. If you want real results in the real world, do the opposite of what popular fitness influencers are telling you to do. Yes. Do what works for you too. Like Kyle said, for your own fitness level, eat the food that you want to eat. Don't listen to other people out there. So we'll move on to another popular thing that we do the opposite of removing whole food groups. Yes. Um, fasting, the focus actually go, going back to exercise the focus on exercising and we've already touched on that like you could work off a bad diet you can't i can eat thousands of calories a big mac 500 calories i could eat probably 10 right now easily <laughs> yeah, right me in too. like 10 minutes easily this is also why the cardio machines and the watches and all that i'm not saying specific companies we don't want to get sued but they always tell you what you want to hear. So a treadmill will tell you you burn four or 500 calories. It's probably two to 300. Yeah, those are just estimates. Like and the estimate, <laughs> if they want to make money, the popular cardio equipment companies, if they want to make money, they will not be honest with you. It, yeah. They want your ego to be inflated. They'll tell you you've burned 1,000 when it's really probably 500. If the fitness industry was honest with you, you wouldn't buy all their stuff and they wouldn't exist. So... They have to lie to your ego, feed your ego stuff that you want to hear so that you'll keep going back to the weight loss fitness industry for help. And then because they're not telling you the truth, then you'll keep failing like Kyle and I did. We eventually had to go, wait a minute. We need to take responsibility here. Stop listening to what they're selling us. And the removing the food groups, like we did all of that. We tried the fasting. We tried removing carbs. We tried eating only clean, organic, grass-fed food. None of that worked because it wasn't sustainable for us. Removing food groups was too restrictive and we kept failing. And anytime we would, you know, break and eat something that we had removed from our diet, it would make us feel guilty. The guilt would trigger our emotional eating and we go in this cycle. And we see a lot of people in the comments doing the same thing. They're telling us they tried keto, they tried intermittent fasting, and they keep failing because it was too restrictive. It's whatever's popular, it's constantly taking away your own personal power. So it's 
basically telling you that you need an outside yes. person or a system or a fitness class or some exer complicated exercise or complicated diet or specific organic food, that that gives you the power to lose weight. That's yes. the secret from outside when the secret is inside. You can eat whatever you want and lose weight if you're in a calorie deficit. That was beautifully said. Like, that was perfect. You nailed it. Thank you. He's right. They are always trying to take your power away to get you to think that you need the fitness industry. You need the perfect diet. And I spent years going, I just need to know what to eat. If I can just figure out the right diet, then everything will be perfect. If, if I can just do what they're saying, do those exercises, do the abs. But in the end, we had to look at ourselves and go, all we can do is walk at our at our size at our fitness level and we could barely do that we had to take a lot of breaks for the you know first 3 months we had to stop every couple minutes and whoa wait we like ice cream and pizza and toast and bread and we don't want to give that up we keep failing doing that so what do we do we ate bread we ate pizza we ate ice cream we ate what we wanted but obviously we had to eat less of it so that we could lose the weight we stopped listening to all the baloney about out there about removing food groups all that did was cause us to fail i can sustain a slow walk for you know it, when i was almost 400 pounds i can sustain a slow walk for five minutes then yes. 10 minutes then 20 minutes i couldn't sustain even once a week running for five minutes and you're not going to burn any calories only running for five minutes there's a lot of social media people out there that are telling you about weight loss and telling you what's best to lose weight and what you should eat and what you shouldn't eat and what's healthy and what's not healthy. And most of the people out there that are telling you have never had a weight problem. They've never struggled with emotional eating. They've never had to lose a lot of weight and keep it off for a long period of time. They're naturally just small and fit already. Kyle and I have had weight problems since we were little. We've struggled with emotional eating. We've lost the weight and kept it off. We've been through the it's, it's not a bragging thing, but it's just pointing out, like, listen to your gut with who you're listening to. Like, we even say, don't listen to us. We're idiots. Like, we're just two people that have lost weight that are just sharing what has worked for us. You need to trust yourself and listen to you instead of people all over social media because you don't know where they've come from. They might not be coming from the space that you're coming from. And so you need to figure out what works for you. You can cherry pick from everyone. Take things that you're like, oh, maybe I'll try this. But it has to be like, if you're looking to lose weight, obviously you want to keep it off. So you've got to cherry pick things that will help you do it in a sustainable way so that you're not going to go on a never ending lose weight, gain it back cycle. It'll help you make it a lifestyle change, not just a diet that will only last for a little bit of time. And unlike a lot of popular weight loss influencers, a fitness people, we don't want you to need the information on our channel. We don't want you to need to watch us. We want you to want to watch us mm -hmm. pick up some cherries like Nicole said along the way and do what works for you. If you're happy doing, you love jogging, do it. If you love keto, do it. If you love whatever you're doing, if you love it and can sustain it, that's all that matters. If exactly. Are you getting an ROI on it? Is it helping your life? Is it helping you live a happier life? Are you healthier? You know, that's all we care about passing on because, because we fell for all this stuff so many times Yeah, and kept hearing the same advice like, keep doing it. You'll get better at it. If it's hard for you, it's probably, oh, you failed on the, the fad diet that was popular. It's probably your willpower that was at fault or you're not, you'll get there someday with doing pull-ups or just keep jogging and you'll, you'll get better at it. No, I won't get better at jogging or pull-ups. <laughs> we don't, I don't like those things. So if yeah. you don't like something, we always say, like, if you're not having fun, you're not getting it done. If you don't love it, if you dread doing it every day, you're not going to be able to sustain it. So just what Kyle said, like, if you like it and you can sustain it, you love doing it every day, do that. That's amazing. You know, but like, 
remember there's so much fear out there that they're they're spreading on social media about like if you eat this you won't be able to lose weight don't eat this at this time only at this time you know all this fear the sweetener the artificial sweeteners the the sugar's bad this you know we had somebody comment today that said like thanks for sharing that you add treats into your diet like all the time because I can see that there's uh, they're putting the fear of sugar out there. Basically, with whatever you like doing or whoever you watch on social media, just be careful that you're not joining a cult. Yeah. Because what we see happening all over the place on social media is these hard set of rules that if you don't follow them, there's something wrong with you yes. and the outside world, you know, they don't get it and they don't follow it. We, we have the secret here and we have the answers. We have the magic pill here and if you just follow these rules that nobody could ever sustain or want to sustain then your life will be amazing that's not what diet is that's not what weight loss is that's not what exercising is it's it's not a set of rigid rules that you follow your entire life and you never break them and if you do you have to hide it or else you're going to get in trouble or you won't be accepted by this group of people that's not how a weight loss journey is not linear. It's not, if me and Nicole, that's why we were failing in the past. We would set up these like hardcore 10 rules that we have to follow or else. And we would always break them and we would eat in secret or, you know, not be able to sustain it and then tell each other, oh, I messed up today. It's because you set yourself up for failure by the very strict rules. We literally would do that. We would follow these rules and then one day we would kind of like wake up and go, wait a minute, who made these rules? And exactly. we would go, we did. Like we did this several times on our journey and they were like, oh, well, if we made them, we can get rid of them then. We can break them. Don't be afraid yeah. to burn your boats. Yes. And we do that all the time. Like we, we're not here to put stuff down. Like if it works for you, that's amazing. What we're here to do is remind you not to treat weight loss like a punishment. And we, we've made many mistakes. It's, it's normal. We're still finding our way. Even eight years later, we still are learning stuff. And what we try to do is share the entire thing with you, the ups, the downs, the mistakes. If we mess up, we tell you. If we've learned something, we share it with you. We try to be as honest as we possibly can because we really are just two regular people who figured out how to lose weight and keep it off in a way that works for us. And that's why, you know, we make these videos and why we get so passionate about stuff and like angry sometimes because we've fallen for a lot of crap over the years and we really just want to share the message like there is good stuff out there but there's also crap out there so just use your judgment pick what works for you if you're loving it that's all that matters you know it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks if it works for you that's what we want you know so we hope that you get inspired we hope you get inspired from this video to find what works for you and if you've tried all the fad diets and all the popular things and they're not working give yourself a try start listening to yourself that's beautiful yes exactly You're beautiful oh thanks <laughs> <laughs> no he's right give yourself a try that's what we had to do we had to listen to ourselves and that's what worked eating what we liked doing, you know, exercise that we were physically capable of and that we enjoyed and that we could stick to. So again, weight loss is not a punishment. Um, I've lost 130 pounds. Both of us have lost 130 pounds with portion control, kept it off for eight years. If you want to know the exact portions and meals I ate to lose the weight, you can buy my weight loss ebook called The First 50. The link is down below and code Nicole will save you 10%. We also have um, this. <clears throat> hey, you brought two. Yeah, well, I brought the holiday one too, oh, but um, so this is Hoodled. I call it Hoodled. It's HTLT Sups. This is my favorite flavor, Luckier Marshmallow Cereal. Kyle's is Strawberry Cheesecake. I, I love this one too, though. But this one is amazing. I'm a cereal person, cereal girl, and this helps with my cravings. Best protein powder ever. Uh, the link is down below. Code Nicole will save you 10%, but they also 
came out with this really cool holiday flavor. This is Paralite. It's like BCAAs, EAAs, and electrolytes. And the flavor is jingle juice. It kind of tastes like an orange gumdrop. So if you like that, you like like BCAAs and stuff. They also got a new pre-workout, same flavor, same. jingle juice. Yeah, same flavor pre-workout. Again, code Nicole will save you 10% and the link is down below. Watch this vid and this vid for more fun, sustainable weight loss tips from two real people who've lost weight in the real world and who are loving it. That's what you want to do. You want to wake up and love it, the friends. We love you. Thanks for your support. We'll catch you in the next one. Cute Rooney's. Peace. We out. See ya. See ya. Bye. <laughs> Hello? Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here. Heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do it. Don't give up.